toss it in the air and get the semifinal underway. Bill McCarthy will approach Paulus Yonalunas for American in the blue and Chris McNaughton, the academic standout for Bucknell in the white. And McNaughton on the back tap to Lee, then Badness. Back and forth, now to McNaughton. Lob for Mascopolo, baby hook, Bucknell in the lead. Interesting Pat Flannery puts McNaughton high and, and Master Polo low to start the game. Kind of caught AU off guard. McNaughton doesn't bring with him gaudy numbers. At 13 points, four and a half rebounds per game. But he can pass it well and he can even step out and shoot from the mid-range. Mercer to Ingram, who has struggled against Bucknell throughout his career. And he just struggled with a turnover. Try to jump the pass and it's knocked across the near sideline. It belongs to Bucknell. And that's exactly the start Jeff Jones doesn't want. Quick basket for Bucknell, then a turnover at his end. Time of possession, right, comes into play right away. They never even got their offense into, into any kind of sink to set up a shot. Bucknell in the quarterfinals, getting by Army 59-47. Much closer game than many would have thought going in between a 1 and 8 seed. Bad miss cut off, out to Charles Lee. Well, Lee has been the player of the year in conference. He might have been the most improved player in the Patriot League over the last three or four seasons. Really emerged last year, just as this team emerged last year, and that's not coincidental. Bettencourt, catch and shoot. He emerged right from the start of his collegiate career. Looking for a 64-3, denied on the rebound for American. Now Mercer to the forecourt. This is a matchup to watch throughout the game. Lukavishis and Betancourt. Yona Linus back out to Mercer. Lukavishis into the lane, whirling off the glass and rim no good. A bit out of control with the rebound to Bucknell. Those are the kinds of shots that Bucknell's defense will make you take late in the clock. Bucknell, third nationally in scoring defense. Fourth nationally in field goal percentage defense. Bad miss to Betancourt. Off to Master Polo, and he fumbles it away. Master Polo's work ethic is an issue for opponents, too. Jeff Jones said before the game that one of the problems playing against these guys is they're so difficult to match up with their scores. And then you got Master Polo, who works so hard setting screens and rebounding that if you don't match his work ethic, you're in big trouble. Bucknell is a deep team, too. Nice catch by Mercer to prevent a turnover. Out to Ingram. Thought about it. Gave it up. The Cavishes can't handle it. Another turnover by the Eagles. But still a 2-0 game with Bucknell. Looking to capitalize once more. McNaughton. Back and forth with the save. AU choosing to double team McNaughton on that play. You won't see too much of that because they're so balanced that you really can't afford to double them. But there's a moving screen. Called by Bill McCarthy. And he had it on Master Polo. And we talked about Master Polo's screening. Here you see the ball on the wing to Badmus. And over there on the left side, coming down the baseline, was Betancourt coming around the screen that we couldn't see from Master Polo that Bill McCarthy saw him moving on. And with that foul, Bucknell only five fouls short of their entire total in Friday's quarterfinal went over the Army Black Knights, who did not shoot a single free throw in that game. Yeah. In fact, the, the six fouls total and three of them were in the last two minutes. A third turnover and a basket for number three. That is right there textbook what AU can't afford to have to today. Easy baskets caused by quick turnovers. They've already got three. One of the ways Army stayed in the game on Friday was slowing the pace. Black Knight, almost with every possession, brought the shot clock down to 10, if not below. American has given it up three times without a shot. Now a little matchup zone here for, for Bucknell, which they switched to during the course of most games. Ingram found Bilby, but he couldn't hit from close range. It's the best shot they've gotten by far in their first five possessions. Lee off the crossover. Soft touch. Jeff Jones needs a quick timeout here. This could get out of hand quickly, and he knows it. Charles Lee has thrived off of motion during his career at Bucknell. And once again, a capacity crowd inside this 4,000-seat arena. 
Here you see the bad pass by Mercer and then the good pass by Betancourt sets up Lee for the easy basket and then Lee scoring again and on the next possession. Americans had five possessions, Bob. They've had three turnovers, a wild shot, and a good shot. Now again, if this is football where you're trying to field position is a factor, that's a that they're making progress. But this isn't football. This is basketball, and they're already in a six-zip hole. The Eagles can't employ the wishbone. And as McCavish is ready to inbound, now they have to deal with full court pressure from the Vice. Let's see if they're just showing it and drop back. Betancourt's going to work on Mercer. They're going to trap here. Jordan hey, you ready for it, though? Back into the matchup zone. Again, what Pat Flannery does well is he makes you think on every possession. What am I looking at defensively? They'll be out to Ingram. Little penetration. Left it short. Again, under duress. Ingram's been shooting better lately, but not as you mentioned against Bucknell. And what a pass by Betancourt. Bucknell is talented, the Bison are deep, and they're unselfish. The only issue they're having right now is that Bill McCarthy just told the Bucknell bench they had to sit down. That's the biggest problem they've had thus far today. Well, they have missed one shot out of the five taken. <laughs> we talk about how good Bucknell is defensively. Their best defender might be sitting at the scores table right now off the bench, Donald Brown. He's so quick for a big guy. Bilby, another deflection. And a pass really into a lane that wasn't there. Under the 16-minute mark, and Bucknell is pitching a shutout. Defending champions looking for a school record 25th win and out to an 8-0 lead on the run here at the Soiko. In February, the Bison climbed into the national rankings. Last March, they splashed onto the national scene. You gotta love that shirt. A lot of orange shirts here, but this one says Buck Bucknell has danced the big dance. And then on the back, it says Just Ask Kansas. And they're still trying to recover from that loss out in Lawrence. As great a job as Bill Self has done with that team this year. Student Bookstore did a lot of business last spring here at Bucknell, as you'd imagine, on the penetration by Derek Mercer. American finally off the schneid and in the scoring column. Took just under five minutes. A nice shot by Mercer. He's got to be the most improved player I've seen in this league from December to March. Now Badness is counterpart in the bind, but he finds Betancourt from the corner. Ingram up for the rebound. Oh. Turnover again for Mercer turned his head a little bit, almost like a receiver. We've uh, talked a lot of football so far today. That was almost like a wide receiver anticipating the defender coming up on him. Took his eye off the ball for a second. Derek Mercer played at St. Anthony's in Jersey City under Bob Hurley, who called him one of the best on-the-ball defenders he's ever coached, which is saying a lot considering the talent at that high school program through the years. Well, just Mercer think about his own family, Bobby and Danny Hurley, who were both pretty good on-the-ball defenders. Bobby, of course, went on to start him at Duke, and Danny went on to play at Seton Hall. Now, Badness... Very good in his own right defensively. Last year's player of the year for defense at Bucknell. You could make the case that he could have been just that again this year. I think the coaches didn't want to give all the awards to Bucknell. But you can do that when a team's undefeated. It also makes the case that while he may not have been all-conference, he might be as valuable, if not more so, than any other Bison. Everything they do defensively starts with him. Betancourt to Mastropolo. Now he hands it off to Brown from the block. Shot clock counting down, and he drew iron, but not the bounce. That was good defense by AU on that possession. The Eagles went more than five minutes without a basket. Nichols too strong with a hook, and it's one and done. Jeff Jones wanted, deservedly wanted a call there for carrying the basketball, didn't get it. That's because it's almost never called. Lee with a kick to Bettencourt. Again, 10.